Hello everyone, welcome to DevOps in AWS. My name is Ahmed for Adionics. This is the first section of our class titled, What is Cloud Computing? In this section, we aim at giving you just a brief introduction to the topics that are going to be covered in this class. What is Cloud Computing? What is DevOps? And then a brief introduction to Amazon AWS, what exactly it is and the services that it provides. So let's get started. Okay, what is cloud computing in English? For those of you who do not know what a cloud computing is, or some of you may actually have used cloud computing, but they need some clear definition in non-technical terms. Actually, offering a service online is as old as the internet itself. Browsing to a website to check your email, like Hotmail or Gmail or any, or any other email provider, shopping for a new pair of shoes on eBay or Amazon, or even tweeting your latest vacation photos is technically using a cloud service. Cloud in this sense refers to a service that is hosted remotely, like in the sky. Cloud here was invented just to denote or to refer to something that is not physically located where you are. You are using an email service, you are using a virtual store, you are using a Wikipedia or a social media website or any other service that is offered online, this service is not available in the place where you are physically located. It's located remotely, so thus the cloud term was invented. But of course, the above activities are not how people refer to cloud computing. When you use cloud computing, you're not just browsing the net to make an online transaction or play a video on YouTube. Cloud computing is much more than that when we refer to how the term is used nowadays. And that is because the internet has evolved so much in the past few decades. Since 1994, when the first website was ever created, and it was just HTML and text, till now, a lot and a lot has happened. The internet has been completely reborn several times in those years. And also, on the other hand, hardware virtualization has gone a long way of development. Accordingly, because of the evolution of the internet and virtualization technologies, much complex services can now be offered remotely, namely, a complete infrastructure. When we say cloud infrastructure, we are referring to a large company called the provider, among which of course is Amazon, Google, Microsoft, and other giant cloud service providers, renting parts of their infrastructure to clients on a pay-as-you-go basis. That is, you pay for what you use and for how long you've been using it. And because different people have different requirements, so not everybody will need to rent a whole infrastructure on the cloud. Not everyone wants to use this. Because of that, we have three main types of cloud provisioning. Infrastructure as a service, or IaaS, Platform as a service, or PaaS, and Software as a service, or SaaS. Let's have a brief look at how each service can be defined. So when we talk about cloud provisioning models, at the lowest level, at the ground level, as it said, we have networking, disks, or we can refer to this as storage area network, SAN, or network attached storage NAS, the servers that are going to host your virtual machines, and a hypervisor that is going to provide the virtualization layer. Those components, to say the least, represent the lowest layer or the closest layer to the hardware. You are just provisioning physically hardware to your clients. You're offering network, storage, servers, and a hypervisor or a virtualization layer. You will have to do the rest on your own. You will have to install your operating systems, install any prerequisites for your software, install and deploy a database engine, a load balancer, a middleware, or any other services that needs to be deployed on your infrastructure before you can deploy your main application. So if you opted to rent just this level, of infrastructure. This is called infrastructure as a service or IaaS. If you want more than that, if you have no time or no resources, or you want to pay for more than this, you can let the provider get you the operating systems, install the database engine, or provide you with an already installed or deployed database engine, possibly deploy load balancers and any other middleware that needs to be in place before your software can be installed or deployed. This is called platform 
as a service or PaaS. So platform as a service, by definition, incorporates everything infrastructure as a service offers, but it adds a layer of middleware, the operating system, the database, load balancers, and any other middleware that needs to be in place. If you want a cloud provider to provide you even with more services, you can have the last model, which is the software itself. The software here, if you opted for this solution, is called Software as a Service or SAAS. That is because the cloud provider in this situation, in this scenario, is going to offer you a ready-made software, but it is highly customizable. Think of it, for example, as a dentist that needs to have a virtual clinic online where his patients or his or her patients can log in, view their reports, book new visits, see their history, see their transactions, and so on. This dentist can opt to rent software as a service from a cloud provider, which creates a dentist clinic on the cloud, and it is highly customizable. The dentist can add his or her own logo, he can change the business logic, how the customers are billed, the times when he is available or when he's on vacation and so on. So this is called software as a service. And of course, it by definition contains all the below services. It contains the platform as a service because of course, a software needs to have an operating system, possibly a database and a load balancer and other middleware. And of course, this cannot be online without an infrastructure. So depending on your needs, depending on how much you're gonna pay, depending on your, requ your exact requirements, you can choose one of those cloud provisioning models. And that's all for this lecture. Until next, take care. Hello everyone, welcome back. In the previous lecture, we've seen what cloud computing is and the different cloud provisioning models that you can choose among so that you can select what is most appropriate for your requirements and your environment. However, some people might ask why I should be using cloud computing anyway. What is the benefit that I'm gonna take from hosting my business on the cloud. Why don't I just buy my hardware and software on a data center, on my own data center? And what are the drawbacks of this approach? And also what are the drawbacks of using cloud services? That is the topic of this lecture. Some people like to follow the buzz. Like for example, when big data was a trending topic and it's still, by the way, a trending topic, Many people try to adopt big data in their companies without even knowing or determining whether or not this is going to benefit them or not, whether or not their environment actually needs the investment in something like big data or not. Same thing goes for cloud computing. Some people just want to follow the hot trends or the hot topics. If cloud computing is the word of the day, they all want to host their, infra their infrastructures on the cloud. They try to convince their managers and their heads that this is the way to go without having a clear business case. Before you can choose cloud computing for your infrastructure, you'll have to first determine whether or not this is the right solution for you. Cloud computing is like outsourcing somebody to purchase your physical infrastructure components, build them and avail them for you. Of course, depending on the model you choose, we have discussed models in the previous lecture, you can refer back to that. It goes without saying that this will dramatically cut your costs. The problem with building your own infrastructure besides the expenses and the time wasted is that you don't use it until your application is up and running. So think about this. You have an application, let's say a booking application where you are going to provide a service for your users that they can book airline tickets through your application. So for this application to work, you need a web server or let's say a couple of web servers for load balancing. And for that, you're, you're gonna also need a load balancer so we're gonna purchase two servers, two physical servers and a load balancer. Then you're gonna need two more servers for the backend database, assuming that you want to build a cluster. So you have now four servers, two web servers and two database servers and a load balancer, let alone the switches that you're going to use for your, connect for your network connections, the routers, and all the other components that comprise a modern data center. Okay, you pay for those components, you pay for whoever installs them and builds them, and then you are ready to start coding your application, start testing your application, start deploying your application maybe several months after this setup has been brought to existence. So think about the costs that you are wasting where the infrastructure is just standing, waiting for the application to be up and running, to start making profits, 
that will cover the upfront costs that you have already paid. But if you use a cloud service, you have everything set up for you. There are people who took time, effort, and money to build a huge infrastructure that can be virtualized and rented to people like you to host their applications. Now you have an infrastructure ready that need only be used when you actually deploy the application. You only pay when the application is deployed, so you're gonna save yourself the costs, the upfront costs of having an infrastructure built and waiting for the application to be live. That's one advantage. The second one is that you can scale up or down as needed. Let's say that you sell gifts online, or let's return to our previous example that you have an airline booking application. Most of the year you receive like 1K to 5K visits a day. However, in holidays and in, in peak periods, as they are called, and during Christmas in particular, this number quadruples to 20K or more. You have a lot of visitors that want to use your application and your services because this is the time of the year that people travel to visit their relatives. So a huge increase in demand on your application is happening. Of course, that is an excellent way to double your profits and at that time of the year. But that will not happen if you don't have an infrastructure that is ready to adapt for that huge amount of excess demand. So, if you are in a traditional model when you have your infrastructure hosted physically in your premises, you will have two options, either to watch users frustrated because your web application is slow and the performance is just not as they expect, that is because your infrastructure cannot accommodate for that huge increase in visits, or you can pay for additional servers. For example, if you have two servers, you can purchase two other servers, so you have four web servers, so that balance is distributed equally among those four servers instead of just two. You can also pay for increased bandwidth, per perhaps by additional routers and so on. But you are scaling up your infrastructure to accommodate for that increase in daily visits. However, once this peak time is over, once the Christmas is over, you will find that you have bought something that is not covering its costs. Instead of having two web servers, now you have paid for four, and it's gonna be long before you cover the costs of those extra pieces of infrastructure. That means lower profits. Of course, nobody wants that. But with cloud computing, you have the option to scale up on down in real time, and with paying only for the period of time you are using the scaled up infrastructure. So if you are in Christmas, you can just configure your cloud hosting, you can just add more virtual servers to your infrastructure. You can add more storage, for example, or more database servers or whatever is needed to scale up your infrastructure. And again, pay for this, of course, but just for the peak period, once the period is over, once this period is over, you can scale down back to your normal operational level. And that, of course, will save you a lot of costs that's, that are going to be wasted if you have a physical infrastructure hosted by yourself. The third advantage is that backup is done in your behalf. Backing up your data is a serious and complex operation and not as some people think, it's not just about taking an incremental copy of your data, saving it somewhere with a number or a label or a date and that's it. No, it includes where you save that data, how many copies you have, where the physical location of the backup media is, is it on-site or off-site and so on. With cloud computing, people are taking care of this for you on your behalf a cloud provider like Amazon or Google or Microsoft are taking care of that for you automatically. So you can stay assured that your data is backed up correctly and with the most up-to-date industry standard regulations followed. So that was the advantages or the pros of using cloud computing. But nothing is a silver bullet. Everything has pros and cons. So let's see what are the cons of using cloud computing or when and why you shouldn't be using cloud computing. With all the bells and whistles cloud hosting has, it still suffers from an important drawback. Your data and infrastructure is located remotely. You don't have physical access to them. So why might that be a problem? Well, depending on your company's business policies and requirements, this may or may not be an issue. Consider the following. Due to the nature of some industries, like for example, stock exchange companies, they cannot use an external provider for their IT infrastructure, no matter how much they'd save if they did. Stock trading companies, where a transaction time and latency is measured in microseconds rather than milliseconds, will care about latency more than anything else. Think about one microsecond that can be the difference between a successful and a failed transaction. Think of a stock that will rise and fall in a matter of a microsecond 
If a customer is asking for a purchase, then this microsecond could mean the difference between a stock price at a single point in time and that price in another point of time. It might grow up or grow down, causing serious losses for clients. So latency here is a very, very huge factor to consider. So stock trading company servers are normally located as close as possible to the stock exchange servers like Wall Street, for example. Additionally, some security policies insist that data must be kept internally within the company's premises. Think of banks, for example. And last, switching cloud providers tend to be a hard and time-consuming operation. So if you think that you can host your application with provider A for a year and then switch to provider B the second year since it offers more features at a less price, well, think again, it's not as easy as it looks. And that's all for this lecture. Until next lecture, take care.